what ultimately you're doing, that this is what I'm, I'm interpreting, is that you are taking your moral code. You're taking, you know, what your guiding factor. And based on that guiding factor, you are, I guess, creating or orchestrating uh, your personal mission and vision statement, first of all, in your own life, um, and then by extension to the stuff that you're involved with in the, in the work that you do. Yeah, it's 100% true. And it's kind of selfish of me that I have imposed that personal mission to live the most meaningful life that I can, uh, not as individual, but as part of a whole. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, when I saw that first headstone, no one ever taught me, oh, if you see a fallen over headstone, go clean it up, go pick it up. Right. People said, oh, if you see a granny trying to cross the street, help her cross the street. We all learned right. that. Right. But I looked at this fallen over headstone, like, this isn't right. And no one's doing this. I can't call anyone. Mm. So where does that leave me? And right. I personally... I believe in a lot of, you know, personal responsibility. It's like, well, if I leave this fallen over headstone, I can either be the person to bring that positive change into the world that I want to see and be mm -hmm. an active participant in that positive change. Right. Or I could walk away and claim that's not my responsibility, but True. then be negatively contributing to a world that I don't think is fulfilling its full potential of mm -hmm. dignity and honor and respect. Mm -hmm. So, and I learned that it doesn't, you don't have to be special to make a big difference. And I only started with one headstone. Now I've, I've restored over 15,000 and digitized thousands on top of that. And I was just a regular guy. I was unemployed. I, it's not like I had any training for this. Right. I literally took tools. <laughs> I took some tools from my parents' broken fireplace. I took their broom this like wood pick, a dustpan, plastic gloves, garbage wow. bags. And I just saw the change. I saw I, I was the change I wanted to see. And it yeah. really, really grew. And we've I've restored digitized graves all up the East Coast of the United States from Florida up to Vermont wow. and Colombia and Israel as well. Wow. And there's another business lesson right there. It's <laughs> don't wait till you have the right tools to get started. Just get started. Grab what yeah, you yeah. can and get going but i love what you're saying like yeah. it's it's and it's I, I could be wrong but it sounds like what you've done what you did because you started off in in marketing if i remember correctly right and mm -hmm. i want to say colombia but the way you said it was so much more beautiful colombia <laughs> yeah colombia there you go right you started there and then you you built up the jcc and then you like shifted almost entirely to something completely random but that it seems like that led to your current employment. And it's the crazy thing is it's, it's random at face mm -hmm. value, but it's all interconnected. I mean, in Colombia, I, Colombia, I had an <laughs> obligation. I was in charge of a community of, you know, 75, hundred people every day. And I was right. 25 when I moved there. I was kind of thrown right. into that. And the only difference is, is that when I got back and to do preserve us, I went from caring for living people to dead people. But, um, but then on top of that, it's also the living members of those who right. passed. So sure. yeah. and it's it's all about working for something more than myself. And right. it's I just would feel selfish otherwise. Right. Um, mm -hmm. and having that being part of a community is something that has brought a lot of like emotional security to my life and also a sense of fulfillment. Right. Wow. Sure. We actually have here in the comments, Gracie's asking a very interesting question, which I had the similar question before. Um, I'll bring it up here onto the screen. Yes. Where once it's digitized, can people search for it online? And could you expand a little bit more about the vision, I guess, of, sure. of, the, of the program? So, Gracie, thank you so much for your question. To briefly describe the Preserve Us app is we are Google Maps for headstones. So just like someone could go into Google Maps and type in CVS near me or Starbucks near me and all the locations populate on the map. You could click on that location and photos pop up and you can get reviews and you can get directions. It's the same thing, but instead of searching for CVS, 
you can search for Charlene Williams and the Charlene Williams that we've digitized pop up, populate in the map. Wow. And if we digitize it and we have all the records there and we have the photos, then you can search all the relevant information. So the first names, last name, relevant dates, uh, photos, and even there's an ancestry component where you can um, find out about their family tree and who their siblings were, who their parents were, where wow. they worked, were they a veteran, et cetera, et cetera. And so we've, we've far from digitized every grave out there. And there are other platforms that have digital cemetery records online. But what we've done is made it more, these records more accessible. And there's a more quality, uh, you know, we have like a higher like barometer for quality of uh, what information is shared. Some of these posts, there's no uh, checks and balances. People could just post information about a grave. I could go out and say, oh, this is George Washington's grave mm -hmm. in, you know, Malibu, California. And I could post it and I could post a picture of a cheeseburger, but that wow. could be George Washington's grave. So we're mm -hmm. kind of, we wanted to bring cemetery digitization to the 21st modern technology era. We're not the first, wow. but mm -hmm. we are striving to be the best.